Representative Akam, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Happy New Year. You too. Thank you. So as we get ready for the 2020 session, you've got a year under your belt. What did you think of your first year in the legislature and was it everything you thought it would be? You know, that's a great question. And is it everything I thought of it? I, I think it was more than I ever expected it to be. And um, I say that in both good and bad. It was high highs and kind of low lows. And I think it's a little bit of a roller coaster when you work really hard to uh, try and get legislation passed and then it doesn't pass. And, and so that can be a disappointment. But it also was a real opportunity that I didn't necessarily recognize coming in to learn about as many things as I I did. I, I had such a great opportunity last session to not only work on really important legislation that meant something to me, but I learned about so many other things I had no idea would be important to me. And so um, it was a great learning opportunity and a great chance to meet a lot of people who can help um, make legislation pass. So it was, it was a good experience. You represent Minnetonka. And according to your campaign page, you were born and raised in that town. What's it like to represent the city you grew up in. Yeah, you know, it's great. I've, I feel lucky. Before I came to the legislature, I was on the Minnetonka City Council. And so I've represented my city since 2012. And um, it's an honor to, to legislate or to leg now legislate and before represent in, in a municipal level my city. And it's, it's I, my roots are there. I have uh, lived there much of my life. I moved back when my children were born. And it's just a great community. And I, I have known people. I run into people that I went to school with when I was young. I've learned or uh, met people, excuse me, that my kids have gone to school with. And so I, I feel like I've got a, a real, I know a lot of people in the community and it's an honor to be able to represent them here now at the, at the Capitol. And what are some of the priorities that your constituents have? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, Chris. And last night I had a listening session in preparation of the 2020 se legislative session. And so um, residents came and talked about, I really wanted to hear what was important to them. And so the, the issues that rose to the top um, this year are similar to the ones that rose when I was campaigning. And it's really about health care, um, affordable and accessible health care, um, education and concern about the disparities in our education here in Minnesota. And in, in education, also the um, higher cost of um, college and the student loan debt that young people are burdened with. And, and then really also the environment. You know, we're at Minnesota, the, the environment is something we highly value. And uh, along with that is, is an issue I'm really passionate about and that's climate change. And um, so I will say those three really equally were discussed in, in, in depth last night at, at our listening session. And so um, I think that's a, represent, a pretty clear representation of, of the priorities in my district. And that was the next question I had for you. Climate change, that's important to you. Yes, it and is. you head the newly formed Climate Action Caucus. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that caucus, what are the type of things that they work on? Yeah, so the Climate Action Caucus is members of the Minnesota House that um, believe strongly that we need to be working um, deliberately, intentionally, and quickly to uh, address climate change. And it really was established because of the response from our members in our districts and the, the call to action. Um, as you may recall, during last session, there were a lot of demonstrations here at the Capitol and even over the interim. Um, the youth climate strike is a great example. And um, people are, are telling us it's an important issue that we need to be working really hard on. And so we, we formed the Climate Action Caucus to do just that. And it's our intent to be looking at different issues through the lens of climate change because really everything is impacted. Um, so we have had meetings on transportation, on public health, on housing. Uh, we're looking forward in January before session starts to also look into the environment um, and, and, and others, agriculture and higher education. And so really everything is touched and it's an issue that we need kind of all hands on deck to solve. And so um, it's our intention to help um, educate um, both members of our caucus as well as um, members of the public and then find areas where we can implement policies to help change. And so we've got, I think, about 50-some members of our caucus right now or that are a mem part of the caucus. And so um, it's, it's an issue that a lot of people are hearing are very, is very important to members in their district. And in, in that same vein, what about the people that don't see it as a top priority? What's your message to them? Well, I think, 
you know, we all need to look at the things that are impacting our daily life. And um, there's only so much capacity that each of us has in order to address them. And, and so I think that healthcare is important and we need to look at its affordability and accessibility to everyone and something that's impacting that is climate change and so air quality is so important and so i think that it may not be a per i think people don't always recognize it as being a top priority and they're not necessarily realizing how it's impacting those that are their high priorities and so education healthcare. Um, transportation, all of those are, are directly impacted. And um, so I think it's just demonstrating and showing uh, how that is impacting. And so that's our, that's one of our goals. And as finally, I had to ask you about this. A coworker of mine recently read a Star Tribune story yeah. about youth serving on city boards. And your son was mentioned yes. Yes. serving on the Minnetonka Park Board, yeah. 16 years old. I know. <laughs> what would you say to youth that want to get involved in, in government, no matter what level? Yeah, you know, I, I think I was really proud of Jack um, for being involved. And I think that youth have such a passionate um, perspective that we need to hear. And we've seen on several issues, climate change, on gun violence prevention, it's really been youth that are leading the, the call to action. And so I think we need to hear voices. We need to hear the voices of our youth. And I, I think that while many can't vote today, they're gonna to vote either next year, the year after. And it's great opportunities for young people to not only have a voice and participate in policy making, but get that experience to maybe um, put them onto doing other things in their life. Who knows where, where it'll lead, but I, I think it's a great way for young people to get involved in the, in the process.